see that my 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 sort of story of um, reimagining education began sort of both well inside and outside of the university because as I said prior to that I was you know in the schooling system kind of you know stuck in my kind of logic and rational head um, but but the learning outside was very much uh, working with and an, a deep listening to many communities and people's struggles uh, in this against the systemic violence um, and also listening deeply to our, to struggles closer to home I mentioned to you the the struggle of the Philippi horticultural uh, area where this a group of people uh, living there and people in and around Cape Town are struggling to uh, maintain this land for cultivating food as opposed to the story of development. And there is about deeply relating to soil diversity and understanding soil, not just as soil to produce food for you know, our use, but uh, you know, soil as a composite of life and, and the soil that's needed to restore and maintain carbon cycles, the soil that's needed for all the microbes, the, the soil that's needed to absorb water because in that area there's an aquifer. And, and really to dismantle this notion of uh, development that is this idea of progress and you know, in a way, if 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 this 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 does go ahead, it's you know it's killing life because it's you know it's cementing over soil, cementing over over water, and so so that that listening to the struggle beyond just the aspects of sort of justice was a a deep um, way or experience for me to you know reimagine the way we. We, we learn how we're, we're educated. And then I also mentioned that I went back to university. Um, yeah, after working in the sort of activist world for 20 years. And I came across these scholars that were dismantling the ideas of Western modernity as the sort of universal way of that the world is organized. And Oddly enough, in my activist spaces, which were Marxist spaces, socialist spaces, social ecology spaces, um, none of these scholars like Donna Haraway or Walter McNolo or William Cronin um, were, you know, were kind of, were were part of the discussion. And because I realized a lot of, you know, our our kind of histories or understanding is, is so from a Western perspective. So um, there, there, there isn't a deep questioning of the sort of ontology of the, you know, the way we are, the way we you know, are organized on this, in this world and the knowledge, the epistemologies of that's primary from a, a Western perspective. And so for me, these scholars started opening possibilities for multiple ways of knowing and one multiple multiple ways of being and that's now is very much um, I guess incorporated in my own thinking and ideas of reimagining education. Well you know well the world's in a huge crisis for one <laughs> so, and uh, change is falling out the COVID virus is you know in, impacted us globally and so I hope that there's people are asking questions that something is very very wrong about um, our way of being on this earth and when I say ah I always have to say the the western modernist mind because uh, indigenous peoples and have a very different relationship to to the earth and each other so um, so, so the, we're, we're, we're in a kind of, 
crunch time uh, and and if the earth is already becoming so hostile to humans you know people speak about global warming and I, now we have the coronavirus and so if we're want to be here a bit longer then we're going to have to play it nature's way in a sense and so and so um so it's a kind of urgency in a way to to rethink and come up with some things different altogether but also to remember that that was dismembered and erased but there are many knowledges that have a relational understanding um but that was not seen as you know relevant or important by a kind of western modernity box head and so there's this kind of urgency to you know bring back relationality why is it important um to well to me to reimagine education and um and if i think about my own schooling uh you know, I, I realized I was taught to think in the kind of rational, logical way. And I really enjoyed when I was at school, high school, um, history and biology. But and but if I go back and I think how I was taught history, you know, it was mostly just human histories and, you know, wars and celebrating modernity. And even biology, uh, I, I, felt, I felt a little bit if I think about it now, a bit like robbed away, like how we didn't learn how things connect and that our own bodies are multi-species. And so um, I remember learning about cells. So like, for instance, what, there's a mitochondria in our, cell, in our bodies, the cell, and that is our energy cells. And, you know, and, and what we feed our bodies affects our inner energy. But we, I realized that I was just learned in this, in this very kind of disconnected separate way and and even now when i i teach at environmental sociology and when i went to university i studied botany and ecology but but i realized that i learned ecology without people because all you were learning about is sort of plant systems and animal systems and like as if they people were separated and in the humanities we speaking about people and politics and well, society really just a Western modernity society, but without kind of our connection to the non-human world. So, so yes, yeah, so the whole approach or model is very wrong. <laughs> and so, and so I, yeah, so I also was drawn, and that's what also drew me to this that conference to to reimagine education. And I I do want to read one thing that's become very critical and important to me about remembering and um, reclaiming and reconnecting to to the soil and I, I borrow this from uh, a, a paper that I read from T uh, Seisman and Wenzel and they refer to a Kenyan novelist his name is uh, Nugui Wationgo and um, this is taken from a book he wrote. It was called "Was It of the the Crow?" And this paper was about extractivism, and uh, and for me this 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 line really captures um, the notion of e extractivism and the sort of human mastery over nature. And he says they knew how to take but not give back to the soil. And so. For me, this reimagining of education is about reverence to life and life affirming because, you know, the world's been organized just to extract and take and, and as you said, as at schools and even at the university, you know, we're taught to be these sort of capitalist minions to maintain the sort of industrial cycle and this productive cycle, whether it's capitalism or socialism, it's still um, extractive. So, so for, for, and for me, the soil is not just the soil in the land, but it's soil as a composite of, of life. And, and so it's understanding our relationship to nurture the soil so it nurtures us. And, 
and nurturing from the stories that have been so dismembered from people that have been connected to the soil. And so bring back ideas about the communal and um, community. So yes, so I think that that's so, that's so lost, this kind of understanding our interdependence and interconnections with land and soil. And so a lot of my own teaching is to historically teach why how land became landed property because that's such a constructed you know notion of land and to bring back the and remember you know land in terms of uh, relation and connection so yeah so there some of the projects are within the university and uh, it's my own approach to teaching, learning, and unlearning. And so I teach an uh, undergraduate course. It has a terrible title. It's called Development, Poverty, and Globalization. And uh, I teach a second module that's about sustainable development. And uh, I feel, well, grateful in this department where I teach that I'm allowed to experiment. <laughs> so. And so, um, so part of the my teaching is to dismantle and disrupt the notion of sustainable development. Of course, I have to explain to the students how it emerged, and now we have the sustainable development goals, as you know. But the space allows me to bring in um, not only critique of the the concept, and uh, there's a uh, Indian scholar that I uh, Vishwanathan, Shiv Vishwanathan. I don't know if you know him, but uh, he did a huge critique on the the, uh, the the Brunton report, but but it allows me to um, bring in uh, ideas of uh, other kind of uh, social organisation, and so um, and so for me in the course it it brings ideas that are life affirming about care reciprocity. Um, cultivating food in a way that nurtures the soil and then in return the soil nurtures us and bringing other concepts of you know gifting um, exchange cooperatives and so um, for me the space now at the university or in my undergrad teaching and in my postgraduate teaching um, yeah is to descend to the the modern the, the modernist human um and to both historically teach how these systems were constructed so how land became landed property but and how there is there needs to be space and opportunity and possibility to change those relationships so yeah so that would be my part of my university project and then the other part is to bring in the the struggles of uh, various communities into the university. And so in some of the courses, I have um, people involved in struggle, like the Philippi Horticultural Area, come into the class and talk about struggle. So, so it also for me dismantles the notion of the expert, because there's so much knowledge uh, outside of the university and and so much people many people have more direct experience and connection to na land and nature and also just cultivating different relationships to each other and so so it is to bring people in struggle into the to, to the university and speak about those experiences yeah and then lastly a lot in a beginning in my sort of writing and with uh, a few friends that are like-minded is that we're we're writing in a way that decenters the human and and ask questions like if the soil could speak what would the soil be saying um in my own research i also looking at sort of land-based learning and learning from the changes in the land and the changes in the soil uh, as a result of different relationships to the soil and the extractive relationships 
is sort of deadening the soil and uh, and what yeah that what did it mean to to shift relationships with land and soil so yeah I, so those are sort of broadly the kind of you know projects i'm working on and and i guess personally i i do this type of work in an embodied learning approach because i feel to get out of the head space um yeah, one has to move or breathe. And so I I dance a lot. So I, I do a lot of conscious dancing and movement and breath work and, um, you know, as a way of uh, maybe linking to the spirit world, to ancestors and just getting out of my headspace because um, I feel that to... Um, open up possibilities yeah we you know it's not it's some kind of rational logical approach it's you know it's you know you have to create the space for the new so so that's kind of my own journey a little bit yeah so i have unlearned this ideas about um a deterministic way to fix problems um and so i always remember when i worked in the ngo spaces we really had these sort of frameworks around sustainable development or what justice may look like but um i've kind of it's dissolved i've kind of dismantled that out of my approach to to learning or, or thinking about the challenges of the world. And so, um, as, although it's still very sometimes uneasy, but uh, I'm learning to surrender to the unknown, maybe. And that's a, that's a big unlearn. <laughs> so, um, and let ideas just emerge. And, and for me, I've also unlearned this this kind of utilitarian relationship to to nature. So, um, you know, in my own work, I'm very critical of the or I'm rethinking renewable energy transition. So, the kind of humanist mind already sees, you know, the wind and the sun is there for free, and we just need the technology to generate our energy. Uh, sort of you know new green energy and yeah i've i've began to to think quite differently and and um work through you know values of you know what is how do we operate or what operate how do we live in this world that uh, is in much more in the communal and is more life affirming so I had to really shift my kind of you know, utilitarian ways and kind of the sort of idea of like, you know, knowing or I know, just thinking, actually, I don't know. <laughs> and to be comfortable with that. 